Hello Vikings and welcome back to the channel. Um, today was supposed to be a Alexo video, but um, something had gone wrong with my uh, audio settings during recording. So uh, instead, a little emergency video and uh, <laughs> also a new series, uh, current recording at frigging 1am. Uh, <laughs> great! Totally professional. Um, yeah, a uh, new series, What in the Wishlist. Um, I have created a document currently on 10 pages, uh, and I haven't finished doing research, uh, covering all the nations and um, potential subtrees for, for each nation, uh, and gone through all the vehicles I would like to see added. I have split them into vehicle types, and um, basically my plan is to just do, yeah, do these nation by nation, type by type. Um, starting off with, as you may have guessed by the uh, <laughs> the picture in the background, um, the U.S. Uh, some of you may even know what this vehicle is. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. First vehicle is the T-17 Deerhound. Um, it was designed by Ford to meet the US and British requirements for a medium armored car. Um, but it lost out to the stag count in that category. Uh, however, in early 1940s, the US were doing so many different armored car projects that they ended up setting up a um I can't even remember what it's called now uh they ended up setting up a dedicated committee that's the word uh just for the armored car projects to form some sort of coherence between them and uh that committee ended up cancelling all armored car projects with the exception of the one that um, ended up becoming the M8 Greyhound that we already have in game as a old event vehicle for the US and as a reserve for China. Um, and all that happened in 1943. However, um... <laughs> Lots of different armored car prototypes prior to that. Uh, and uh, this is one of them. Um, it may look a little familiar as it is designed for the same requirements as the stack count that I will uh, touch on later in the series. Um, but uh, yeah. I ended up building 250 of them, uh, partly because orders for the vehicle were already placed before it was cancelled, and they needed a stopgap before the M8 was ready, so 250 of these were designed, or were built. Um, most of them ended up serving the US military uh, police in the States and lost the uh, 37mm gun. Anyway, the actual specs for the vehicle, it is a 6x6 chassis, uh, it's 5.5 meters long, 2.7 meters wide, 2.3 meters tall, and it weighs 15 tons. Um, it's powered by two Hercules JXD 6 cylinder engines with a combined horsepower of 180, well, 90 each, it's going to lose a little bit on the connection and uh, supposedly able to reach its up speed of 90 kilometers an hour um it's probably going to be a bit slower than the greyhound in game as it is quite a lot heavier um the armament consists of a 37 millimeter m6 cannon um and a coaxial 762 m1919 in essentially the same turret as that on the M3 Lee and the Grant. Um, and it has a hull-mounted uh, 
1919 as well, though most likely that won't actually be operational in game, knowing Gaijin. They they tend to just go with proper turreted guns. Uh so yeah. Should have some decent turret armor, if nothing else. Uh and it is supposed to have a crew of five. That would be two in the hull and three in the turret. On to the next one. Not the best picture, but um, very few that uh, we're able to find. Uh, we got the T-17E3. I like to call this the Scott Hound. Uh, it's a single test bed vehicle mounting the M8 Scott turret on the T-17E1 stack count chassis. Never actually went into production though. Um, and finding specific information on this variant is extremely difficult as it is a one off prototype or very few prototype uh, series. It was probably designed to give the uh, stack count some better. Well, yeah, infantry support capabilities mounting the 75 howitzer. Uh, the design is a 4x4 chassis. I mean, we know the chassis. We have it in game already as the second AA in the British tree, the second AA. But yeah, 4x4 chassis, 5.49 meters long. Uh, that discrepancy is probably because they weren't using meters in the design. 2.90 at 96 69 meters wide and the base model is 2.36 meters tall uh, though this version would probably be about 20 to 30 centimeters taller um barely noticeable in game but just a, a minor detail um and i'm, I'm basing that additional height on the difference between the M5 and the M8 Scott variants uh, as they have the same hull but the turret is swapped out. Um, it will probably also be a bit heavier than the 14 tons of the base model uh, as the turret does well, not so much have more armor, but it's just bigger <laughs> overall. Um, so, yeah, probably a bit heavier as well. It's powered by two GMC 270 engines, uh, providing a total of 194 horsepower and should be able to bring it to a speed of 89 kilometers an hour. The armament, which I already kind of touched on is the 75 millimeter m2 or m3 howitzer uh, as well as the ability to mount a 50 cal m2 in the uh, turret ring well turret it i don't know it, it has a uh, pin mounted machine gun available at least um probably wasn't mounted on the prototype but feel like it should be mounted as it's it's just part of that turret. Uh, we already have the turret on the M8 Scott and the LVTA4, I believe it is. Um, then we already have the hull as well, actually. <laughs> so yeah, it would uh, it would be a new vehicle, but it wouldn't require a lot of new assets. Kaijin, cough, cough. Um, maybe Lopia uh, Battle Pass reward, you know, instead of premium time. Definitely not mad about that or anything. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it also still has the M1919 in the hull, uh, as the base model stack count did as well. The crew of this variant would probably have been five, uh, three men turret and two people in the hull as per standard stack count. Um, but I mean, again, single prototype, very difficult to find information about. And if you have any good sources on it, uh, please hop onto my discord and, and send them to me so I can read more about this vehicle. Uh, the link to this, my discord is going to be down below.
a slightly newer version of an armored car, we got the M38 Wolfhound. Um, this was designed as a replacement for the M8 Greyhound in 1944, but uh, only a few prototypes were actually completed before the end of World War II resulted in the cancellation of the project. Um, so yeah, not a lot of history there, as <laughs> it didn't really get that far. But uh, still an interesting vehicle nonetheless. The chassis is quite clearly a 6x6. Um, it's 5.1 meters long, 2.44 meters wide, and only 1.98 meters tall, which is not all that much for an armored vehicle. Um, and it weighs in at 6.9 tons. Uh, it's powered by a Cadillac 42 V8 engine. Um, can't find the exact number of horsepower, but somewhere between 110 and 148, and should supposedly be able to reach 97 kilometers an hour. It is armed with the 37mm M6 and a 7.62 M1919 coax, as well as being able to mount a 50 cal M2 on an AA pendle. Um, so very similar armament to the M8 Greyhound. The crew is a total of four. Uh, I'm not sure on the arrangement. It would either be two, two, or, um, well, one in the hull and three in the turret. Uh, but again, prototype, so a bit difficult to find specific information and a bit difficult to tell from the pictures. In addition to the standard M38 wall found, we have a one-off prototype of a uh, wall found mounting the Chaffee turret. Uh, I've just been calling it the M38 wall found Chaffee uh, <laughs> in my script. Um, it is a one-off modification, uh, but it does bear some semblance to the Alvis Saladin, though there is no actual relation between the two. Uh, just kind of an interesting detail that two different nations ended up with a vehicle of very similar design. Um, it's the exact same chassis as the standard Wolfhound. No change in the power plant either. Um, it's armed with a 75mm M6, obviously, I mean, standard Chaffee armament, and, uh, yeah, 762 coax, and should be able to mount a 50 cal uh, M2 on the roof, just like the Chaffee, though all the pictures of it uh, is without the, the roof 50 cal. Um, so that, that, that is up to Gaijin's discretion whether it would get that or not. Uh, hopefully it would. It makes it just a little bit better. And yeah, there's not really a lot else to say about this one. It's kind of just a, a uh, yeah, variant of the Wolfhound that I would really like to see. That is going to be it for World War II vehicles. Uh, now we're getting to some post-war stuff. Starting out with the LAV-25, um, this could alternately be added as part of a Canadian branch. Uh, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> no surprise, I think, to anyone that I would put Canada as a uh, as a sub-branch for the US. Um, they're right next to each other, and despite Canada being part of the Commonwealth, um, the... World War II industry in particular, as well as post-war, is very heavily influenced by the U.S. industry as well. Um, so the designs have a lot of similarities. Um, so yeah, uh, it could be added as the left Coyote, or just Coyote, in, in, a, in a Canadian branch instead of the left 25. 
Um, it's designed for the US Marines as a way of increasing division mobility. Uh, the Army was interested in this vehicle initially as well, but uh, they had a lack of funding that resulted in only the Marines actually using the vehicle. It is the same chassis as the uh, Lab AD we got in game now, um, just with a different weapon system. The design is a 8.8 chassis, uh, it has switchable 4 8 wheel drive, that would be pretty cool to see, um, not that I think it actually makes any difference on road, uh, just more fuel economic I would suppose, which doesn't matter in game. It is 6.39 meters long, 2.5 meters wide and 2.69 meters tall with a weight of 12.8 tons. Powered by a Detroit Diesel 6V53T, 300, 300 horsepower engine, um, has a top speed of 100 kilometers an hour. Pretty much just like the Lab 18 game. It's armed with a 25 millimeter M242 Bushmaster and a Coex 7.62 millimeter. Uh, as well as being able to mount a uh, 7.62 on the roof. There's a crew of three, the driver and a gun and commander in the turret. Um, and room for passengers, but that doesn't matter in, in Gaijin size. It's just empty space. Next up, we got the... Actually, this is a perfect image. Holy crap. Um, next up, we got the Lab 300. Uh... It's a private venture um, by Cadillac Gage. Ended up being taken into service by the um, militaries of Panama and the Philippines. Um, it's not an awful lot of, of the history. I mean, it's it's built for for capitalism and sold in the export market. Uh, not to an awful lot of countries. Uh, um, it's a six by six chassis. Obviously, uh, 6.4 meters long, 2.45 meters, 5.4 even meters wide, and 2.7 meters tall, weighing in at 14.7 tons. Powered by a Cummins 6 CTA 8.3 turbocharged diesel engine, producing 260 horsepower and bringing it up to 105 kilometers an hour. Uh, the armament is. An unspecified 90 millimeter gun, but uh, looking at pictures of the vehicle, I am almost entirely sure that it is some form of Cockerill uh, low pressure 90 millimeter variant, uh, or yeah, no low pressure 90 millimeter gun that we already have a few derivatives of in game, um, as well as a 762 millimeter coaxial. The crew is three. Driver in the hull and Commander Gunner in the turret. And somehow they managed to fit nine passengers into this, which just seems crazy, but I mean, sure, why not? Related to the LAV 300, we got the LAV 600. It started out as an improvement of the LAV uh, of the 300, designated LAV 300A1, and was later changed to the LAV 600. It is the exact same chassis, although it does look like there is some uh, minor differences, but supposed to be the same chassis uh, as the Lab 300. Um, but presumably both a bit heavier and a bit taller due to the new turret. Um, power plant remains unchanged and the armament is, well, it's that of the Stingray light tank, as that's where the turret comes from. An L7A3 105 mm rifle gun, a 7.62 mm coax, and a 12.7 AA machine gun on the roof. And we still have a crew of three. Next up, we got something a bit more unique. Kinda. <laughs> uh, we got a Canadian vehicle. I mean, that's the, that's the first part of it. Uh, New nation, kinda. We already have Canadian vehicles, but 
sub branch of Canadian vehicles should definitely be added to the US and I do have a whole bunch more of them on my list. Uh, yes, including the one everyone immediately thinks of, so uh, don't comment it. Um, the AVGP, AVGP Cougar is essentially the design, or the AVGP at least, is the design that started the whole LAV family. Um, it's also designated as the LAV-1. Uh, it was built for the Canadian military in the 70s. Uh, um, with the AVGP chassis forming a, the base for a series of three vehicles, the Cougar, Grizzly and Husky. Um, the Grizzly and the Husky being armored personnel carriers armed with nothing more than machine guns. Um, the vehicles are still in use with some branches of the Canadian Police Force. Um, and uh, in Uruguay as well. It's a 6x6 six six chassis, 5.97 meters long, 2.5 meters wide. And uh, it does not specify how tall it is anywhere I can find. Um, but we're probably talking in the uh, 2.7 meter tall area. Um, I'm not sure on the specifics though. Again, if you have any more information on the vehicles, please hop over on my Discord. The link is down below. And uh, yeah, send it to me. Um, it weighs in at 10.7 tons uh, for the chassis alone. I'm unsure how much the turret weighs, uh, but it cannot be more than a few tons. Um, powered by the Detroit Diesel 6V53T that also powers the um, LAV25. Uh, this time only with 275 horsepower though. And able to bring the vehicle to a top speed of a hundred kilometers an hour. Uh, the Cougar variant of the AVGP mounts the turret and gun from the FE101 Scorpion, a uh, British vehicle that's definitely on my list as well. Um, the 76 millimeter L23A1 gun, uh, fairly low velocity but firing heat and hash. And a 7.62 millimeter coax. Uh, rig crew, one in the hull, and two in the turret. And finally, for the uh, US slash Canadian light tank slash armored cars, actually, I think they were all just armored cars. Should probably have put the Stingray on the list. Now, yeah, well, we can always update it further down the line. Uh, if people have any vehicles they think should be on my list, again, up over on the Discord and throw them my way. Um, maybe we'll make addendums for each of the categories. Anyway, uh, the last one on my list for now is the LAV3, uh, called Kodiak by the Canadians. It's the third generation of the LAV family, uh, based on a license-built Moak Piranha 3H uh, to reduce cost, as uh, the whole project had been cancelled once by the Canadian government, but was picked up again after an election, uh, putting in a liberal instead of a conservative government, but let's not get into all the politics. Um, mounts the same turret as the uh, Coyote, the LAV25, um, again, makes sense. You don't want to develop a whole new weapon system when you just want a scout vehicle, really. 8x8 um, eight eight chassis, 6.98 meters long, 2.7 meters wide, and 2.8 meters tall, weighing in at 16.95 tons, almost 17 tons. Uh, powered by a Caterpillar 3126 diesel 
with a 300 horsepower total and a top speed of 100 kilometers an hour. The armament is the same as the LAV25, consisting of the 25mm M242 Bushmaster and a 7.62mm Coex. This time, however, they do get thermal sights. Um, besides that, there is provision for mounting either a 5.56 or a 7.62mm machine gun on the roof. The crew is, yet again, three. The driver in the hull and a commander and gunner in the turret and that will be it for this rather comprehensive emergency video recorded in the middle of the night um like the video comment up over on my discord uh i mean i check both the comments and my discord uh if you have any vehicles you think i've missed or any more info on the vehicles i've covered please do join the discord the link is down below and i will make sure there is a dedicated channel for this topic um and feed me the information i freaking love researching tanks but sometimes finding information on more obscure prototypes can be a bit challenging to <laughs> understate <laughs> um and yeah um i will probably start doing some of these videos a bit more frequently as there is quite a lot of vehicles to cover um so yeah i hope you enjoyed thanks for watching don't forget to uh subscribe if you don't already do and i will see you in the next one